Hi, welcome back to World of the Psychic. Together we shall cast ourselves into the future. Seen any aliens lately? This is a part of America we never get to see. Are you by chance referring to the legend of the Loch Ness Monster? A ball of twine that weighs 19,000 pounds. What is this, nerd porn? It is about the Templar treasure, but it's also about other things. Uh, conspiracy theories, urban legends, and other myths that are true. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the travel oddities podcast. <laughs> This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Welcome to Travel Oddities. I'm Brett Manzer. And I'm Harley Covington. We had some technical difficulties getting started. A little bit. I mean, you know, I'm all about transparency. Let's be honest. This isn't the first time we've cut the intro. That would be <laughs> negatory. <laughs> anyway, so hey, we're this is travel oddities. Our doors are wide open. We there's no curtain really between us and the wizard. The, the great and powerful Oz is, is just two guys and they're buck ass naked. And they're buck ass naked. It, it, it's, that's the only time we're going to reference nudity. Or anything inappropriate. Yeah, apparently Brett has a public apology for the last episode. I do. But you said I didn't have to. No, I no, oh, now I feel but, compelled. But no curtain. No curtain, full disclosure, full transparency. It's part of being in the public limelight. You can't show all of your cards. I do want to apologize. There were, I listened to the last episode. A lot of D, lot some some there was some suggestive material, correct. A lot of references to various parts of the anatomy. There were a lot of off-color jokes. A lot of off-color uh, and, color jokes, and you and I failed to notice it at the time. I didn't notice it until we listened because we listened to it again on the way in, and I was like laughing, but kind of it was like uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> oh god, I'm an ass. Uh, so I do want to apologize for our listeners, and any groups uh, that we subscribe to that have listened to us uh, at last, the last episode, it won't happen again. So look, can we can we move on? Can, is this the part where our, we move forward? Absolutely. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about... This the, is episode one. We're starting over. We're starting fresh. No, we're not no? going to do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Lake Tahoe monster, mm-hmm. most commonly known as Tessie. Tessie, of, of course. The cousin of... Half-brother n- of Nessie? Yes, a part Scottish. Yeah. So, today's show, Nessie, we're going Nessie. to be we're gonna be talking about a specific body of water, Lake Tahoe. A lake shrouded by mystery. A lake shrouded by mystery, according to Leonard Nimoy. Right. So we'll get right into it then. So? So? So, well, Tessie is a lake monster similar to Nessie, said to live in the waters of Lake Tahoe, a crater lake that sits on the border of California and Nevada. Now, I don't know people that go to, to Tahoe to party, but I don't know, really, you know, Tessie, I don't, uh, Tessie is Nessie. No, Tessie is not Nessie. Well, she's the Nessie of Lake Tahoe. I think Leonard Nimoy would take offense to that. He would. Hello, I'm Leonard Nimoy. Few of the great mysteries we will explore in this series are as compelling as the accounts of an unknown beast which lives in a picturesque lake. Uh, it is very picturesque. I know people that go there and party. <laughs> yeah, the, if you look for video of Tahoe Tessie, you see a lot more bikinis, bikinis. than you do fins and uh, tails. This, I mean, it's a lake that's 22 miles long, 12 miles in diameter, and over 1,600 feet deep. So, are there is there a possibility that there could be a creature in this, or an unidentified creature in this lake? Sure, it's I, deep I would, enough. I would think that if you're if you're gonna hide. 
a sea creature, a freshwater creature, this would be the the place to do that. It's big. If you're going to survive the Ice Age, you're going to be in a body of water similar to this. Another interesting fact about this lake, it's actually a remnant. It's left over from when the entire area was a giant inland sea. Is that right? That is right. That's cool. Yes. Okay, so Tessie, Mm -hmm. she's described as uh, being between 10 feet and 80 foot long, um, having a serpentine body with black or turquoise reptilian skin, and is fast enough to keep up with sailboats. Now, they've seen them, seen her in their wake, or as they're kind of cruising along, it's kind of like dolphin-like as they are cruising along, kind of seeing her, her appear, a hump appear, or something like that is that no like typical? like they're cruising through the lake yeah and this thing is keeping, keeping up with them or speeding past them oh wow it's crazy yeah i'm i'm thinking a sailboat's not the way to go you're gonna need a bigger boat uh i would <laughs> <laughs> i would agree 110 percent on that one sheriff brody uh we're gonna need a bigger boat and a, you know, the the only it, the only real issue I have with these, and and I want, I want, I want Tessie. But these are stories that go back. You know, this this is an old Paiute legend from back in the eighteen hundreds. This thing has been around since the eighteen hundreds. Right. And has survived and thrived. Well, the and stories have. The stories have survived and thrived. Um, with no real concrete, you know, what I'm seeing is you're always having the photographic evidence, but there hasn't been just any real concrete. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence, a lot of stories, a lot of this guy saw this and we saw this while we were diving and we'll get to that. But I would agree. There's no hardcore scientific evidence to back up. Nessie slash or Nessie or Tessie at this point in time. Well, and it doesn't seem to me just from what I'm, what I'm gathering is it's not like the Lake Tahoe, you know, the Lake, the Lake Tahoe area seems to be more interested in attracting tourists to throw beer cans in the water than anything else. You know, they had, they, they had a Tessie museum at one point, right? They've had hotlines that you can call and report, those sightings, those have since gone away. Right. So there's not really an outpouring of, you know, whereas everybody goes to the to Scotland, not necessarily just to play golf. People go there just to see if they can see Nessie. And it doesn't really seem like the Lake Tahoe area has embraced this legend as much as, you know, the the John Q, the, just the your I don't know. There's a select a select few that our audience, our audience, right? So, but they have tried. So a, a lot of the it seemed to me that they at least gave it a spin. You know, you and I talk all the time about if you're gonna be a restaurant in one of these locations, yeah, have a squatch burger, a squatch burger, you know, something of that nature. Tessie has actually been the logo for a lot of Tahoe companies. Oh, it has? Yeah, I yeah. mean, and they just throw it up there. You know, it's Joe Bob's tree trimming business. With, with a Tessie on with it. With a Tessie on it. Right. But, I mean, they've given it a whirl, so we should at least give them credit for that. But I think as a tourist destination, it attracts a very young crowd mm-hmm. that are there to, to drink to- and overindulge and that sort of thing. Um, and we'll talk about more because we, you and I talk all the, you, you did, I mean, you hit it right on the head. We talk about it all the time. How are, you know, if you want to attract people to your area uh, to, for that specific thing, and we're going to, and we're going to talk more about that mm-hmm. a little bit later because we've got some ideas too. We do. Of what, what you could do to, you know, maybe, Draw in the draw in our people, you know, the We're to crowd, the to crowd that's not just there to, you know, 
to be do you, to be debaucherous. Right. We're not going to throw beer cans in your in your lake. So interesting that the mafia ties in to Tessie. There. Well, again, you're you're in the right area. Las Vegas isn't far away, and there were they were the early. That was a terrible segue, by the way. But I'm sorry. It was? I, I, well, I had a terrible segue. We went from talking about that, and then we jumped right into the mafia thing. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> I thought you were <laughs> implying that our listeners, our audience, are all connected with the mob. I thought that was a thing. Is that not? A... If they are, please send money. Just, I mean, we'll clean it for you. And we'll say, hey, if, I don't know, fill off a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I just found a hundred turkeys. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, according to local legend, the lake is a graveyard for the mob. Uh, victims of the mob between the 20s and the 50s were supposedly dumped in the lake. And there are a lot of stories from local fishermen you know, we I pulled up a human ear, hand, while fishing, that sort of thing. I'm I'm, I'm guessing that's the the meal plan for Nessie or Tessie. Sorry, that's her her uh, diet is um, old gangsters, rats, rats, rat. They're <laughs> sorry, but come on, man, mobster rats. Okay, so there's a, a place in the lake called Cave uh, Cave Rock. Uh-huh. It is thought to be uh, Tessie's lair. And if I say N- Tessie one more time, I N- you want to because you do you want to say that you want to say Nessie. Are you referring to the legend of, of the Loch Ness, Loch Ness monster? monster? No, actually, we're not. We're not this time. Cave Rock is a large formation by the southeastern shore of Lake Tahoe. Now, they say that this is the purported area in which the, the Tessie... A lot of the uh, sightings happen in this general vicinity. Okay. And there are a lot of tunnels and caves in and around the area, which would give Tessie a good place to hide. I'm ready to ask... I'm ready to get your verdict on it, but we'll wait. Uh, I've seen photographs, and... I mean, I will say this. Uh, some of the photographs are compelling you're like that does it's a hump in the water there's you know there i mean it, with a wake behind there with a trail behind it what could it be you, you know you, you think manatee would be the first thing but manatees aren't native to the area uh logs in the water but they're 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 too proportionate and too well and they're not angular back to, to your be. your first point about the wake what propels a log through a lake nothing it doesn't have a propeller on it or fins right and if there's not a current that would drag across the log to create such such a phenomenon so it, it, it's i don't know okay uh so originally that rock is part of a volcanic vent mm-hmm. um that is that it's actually deeper than the lake is now so it's an old, old vent. So there is some suspicion that the tunnel system is more complicated, more complex than we believe that it is, which would give Tessie a hiding place that we're unaware of. My question is this. In this, and I hate to be this way, but in all the shows, because we've, you and I have watched a bunch from... I don't know, ancient aliens to any anything related to this kind of thing. It always seems like they get down to the bottom and go, well, tanks are out of oxygen. We can't go any farther. Is this a situation where with with some research we could find, I mean, we could find out more? Is it just better to, to kind of leave it at a... We will get to it. Um, after our interview. Oh, yeah, we do have it. I keep we, forgetting. We have an there. interview coming up, but we will get to it. There is reportedly a expert, or a, he's since passed away, but we do have expert testimony that is listed in the documentation, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Okay. Um, but more around Cave Rock 
and back to more deaths around uh, around the lake. Mm-hmm. Cave Rock was sacred to the uh, Wash- uh, Washu Indians, mm-hmm. and it's alleged that the tribe tossed their dead off of uh, Cave Rock and said that several spirits perform tribal rites there, and uh, people can often see the Lady of the Lake in the rock formation. Yet another Lady of the Lake legend. Right. Right. Uh, well, I say Excalibur, but does that count? <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to um, cut to a short interview. Yeah. We had, a, we had a chance to sit down with uh, a very important guest, and we're going to put that interview in here for you. The biggest names and news in exclusive one-on-one interviews right now. Hey, it's Brett Manzer from the Travel Oddities Podcast with a very special guest today. Uh, what's your connection to the Travel Oddities Podcast? Oh, what's My- your name? What's your name? My name is Connor Covington. Connor Covington. And how do you pl- how do you factor into the Travel Oddities universe? Well, my dad, Harley Covington, usually is in the spot I am right now. So you're taking over for him? For the moment, yes. For the moment, yes. So you like the Travel Oddities podcast? Yeah. Now, you were telling me earlier that it puts you to sleep at night. Actually, I was just joking, but yes, I do <laughs> listen to it when I sleep. Cool. So tell me... What's your favorite thing about the Travel Oddities podcast? I don't really know. You don't know? It's kind of just the weird. It's the you, oddities part. Do you like um, do you like Bigfoots and stuff like that? Monsters, all that. That's pretty cool to me. Now, I heard you, you came up with a monster of your own. Yeah, when I was thinking about what a pig and a Bigfoot would look like, I decided, what if there was a Pigfoot? And I created it in a game, and my God, that thing is ugly. Have you drawn a picture of a Pickfoot before? No. You should draw a picture of a Pickfoot so we can put it on the Facebook page. So, how old are you, Con? I am nine years old. You're nine? Mm-hmm. Golly, are you ever going to grow up? Um, You've been nine years old for nine years. In about two months Two months? You, one, your birthday? Yeah. So, what? when you think of old... You know, you heard us talking about old yeah. earlier. Mm-hmm. What's old to you? Old to me is around 75 to 80, somewhere in that range. Very intelligent response. So 39 years old, not old? No. Thank that's... you. 42, not old? No, but... It's getting there. Since since I like to joke around with my dad, mm-hmm. <laughs> I call him old. You call him old? But he is not old. He's not? 42. About to be four. Is he, are you forty two, Dad? No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, he's forty one right now. He's getting close. Yeah, but I wouldn't consider forty one old. Right. So, what's your favorite thing to do? My favorite thing to Besides do. Besides listen to the po- Travel Oddities podcast. It's either draw, watch videos on drawing. So mainly drawing. Yeah. Draw. <laughs> you play video games. Yes. So, monsters. Do you believe in monsters? A select few. A select few. What's your favorite monster besides Pigfoot? <laughs> um, let's see here. What's my favorite Travel Oddities episode is the real question. Oh. Um, besides this one. Maybe the Dover Demon. The Dover Demon? Yeah. Describe the Dover Demon to me. You did one day. I remember one day you he's, described it to me. He's a big, melon-head, spindly-armed alien, pretty much. Cool. Well, let me ask you some stuff that's more fun for kids to answer. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Um, Marvel. Okay. Who's your favorite superhero in the Marvel Universe? Deadpool. Cool. <laughs> Who's your favorite superhero? In the, oh, no, wait. Now, why is Deadpool your favorite? Mainly... Now, how do you know he's your favorite? His personality. Are you aware of what his personality's like? Yes. When he's around adults? Mm, Kind of. 
But I do know that he carries around two swords and two guns. Is it two guns or one gun? Which one? He has two guns. Okay. Yeah, but I know that, and also that his DC twin is Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. Which, Deathstroke is, eh, I mean, he's kind of cool, but definitely cool. not as cool. How do you feel that you're not going to be able to go to the movie theater and see Deadpool? My dad. That That is my reason. Yes. My dad. He's, prob- he's wh- probably not going to let me go. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. So anyway, favorites. Do you, uh, what's your favorite food? Um, we got just a little bit of time left. My favorite food is probably bread. Okay, what's your <laughs> what's your other favorite food? I think it's miso soup. Miso soup is really good. Yeah. Where do you get miso soup from? Uh, I think it was the 180 Grill in Norman. Cool. Anything else, Con? Anything else you'd like to say about travel oddities? Keep on rocking. Other than it's the best podcast ever. You hear that? A nine-year-old, who better? From the mouths of babes comes something so profound. You know, I haven't heard a, I haven't heard a politician on the campaign trail say anything as profound as Travel Oddities is the best podcast ever. You heard it here first on Travel Oddities. Connor Covington, thank you so much for just answering some random questions. All right. Thank you to uh, Uh, Connor Covington. Connie uh, Connie. (laughs) Covington. Connie Covington. That's your nickname when you're being a girl. (laughs) (laughs) So back to uh, Tahoe Tessie. Yeah. Um, let's go over some of the sightings. Okay. Uh, from the history books. Okay. Uh, starting back in the fifties, two police officers reported seeing a large black hump rise from the water and said it was going over 60 miles an hour. You know what? <laughs> let's back that thing up a little bit. Leave it to a cop to think something was going over 60 miles an hour. I've been pulled over before, and they said, and in, in on the the ticket where it says, because there's a space where they go radar, wind, air velocity. I mean, there's just like these stupid, they put, uh, it was, it was cl- close to, as close as you could get without writing guest on there. <laughs> so, I don't know. I. I'm just saying, I think they still had radar capabilities back in the 1950s, but yeah, you pulled me over for going two over in a 40, and you supposedly caught me doing it two miles away. Uh, I'm not saying all cops are wrong, but how do you measure sp- speed on the water from land? I'm, I'm going to say it's a, it was a visual observation. Visual observation. I'll go with that. But, again, guessing how fast something is going is probably a little sketchy. Hmm. So, um, in the 1970s, Jacques Cousteau. Loved me some Jacques Cousteau on PBS. Um, reportedly brought a mini-sub to the lake, did several dives, and was allegedly quoted as saying the world isn't ready for what is down there i can find no verifiable evidence that 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 actually actually happened happened. but if he did what did he see yeah what was down there that the world's not ready for uh i'm trying to think of something that the world wouldn't be ready for other than a creature from the deep Cthulhu. 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 Is that like news? Yeah. Am I saying it wrong? Cthulhu. News. That is the only word that someone with a speech impediment could probably say flawlessly. <laughs> That's horrible. You're you're Cthulhu. You're anyway, I'm sorry. Horrible person. Hey, I didn't make one joke about any I've been on I've been on my best behavior this time. 
Right, but just saying. Give me some credit. Okay, you can have all the credit you need. Um, so in the 80s, um, divers Gene St. Dennis and his friend found an underwater cave, and an unknown creature darted out, swimming over a large hole in the bottom of the lake. They felt an explosion underneath them, followed by seeing what appeared to be 16-foot-long creature swimming away. After the dust settled, they said there were fin prints on the floor of the lake. To me, it's, uh, it screams manatee. Now, manatees, they can get up to 20 f- feet in length. I think you made that up. But th- I'm calling bullshit <laughs> on the 20-foot-long manatee. No, I, they can get up there, not 30 feet. I don't think you can get up to 20 feet with a manatee. A manatee. They've evolved. They've right. devolved. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, next up then in um, July or June of 1982, Chris Beebe and Jerry Jones, off-duty police officers, saw an unusually large creature uh, swim by while they were water skiing. Now stop for a second. While you're water skiing, I'm not looking for a creature. I'm not even, I'm doing, I'm trying to, survive okay so if you're water skiing and jaws pops up next to you i think you're gonna notice and how fast are you going when you're water skiing i mean i don't know i've never done it a couple hundred miles an hour really uh, no i'm messing with you i would say 60 i i honestly don't know I would but say i was just gonna go with your manatee measurements and everything's gonna be fast and, and it's not like like the water, mach three but it's not like the water is so placid when you're when you're water skiing that you can see i mean i think water skis create a, so you're a, a saying they saw wake. their own wake i think they saw their own wake okay well we'll give them a call and tell them that july of 1982 so a month later the san francisco chronicle reported that patsy mckay and diane stavrakos no stavrakos stavrakos sorry Jeez. were hiking along the west shore and saw nessie surfacing like a little submarine whoa stop Saw who? Tessie. Sorry, did I say Nessie? You did say ne- <laughs> you did say Nessie, surfacing like a little submarine. Damn, manatee. You th- again? You're going to go with manatee. Manatee yeah. looks like a little submarine to you. Yes. All right. Because when they're when they're being buoyant and they're not swimming, they they're just a little bit of a hump. They can breathe underwater. They come up every now and again. They don't look like serpents. When everything, when it's something's traveling through water, everything looks like a serpent. All right. Uh, so a couple of years later, 1984, several fishermen saw a 15 foot serpent shape Bull passing crap. under the water <laughs> around Cave Rock. <laughs> okay, now you got me. Serpent shaped. Are we, do we, it, Manatees holding hands. Okay, we've got to 84. We're 30 years past the cops that are, are guessing how fast this thing's going in the water. Mm-hmm. Do we have photos yet at this point? There are photos. Are they blurry photos? <laughs> they are blurry photos. There are blurry photos of Tessie. Um, okay, so 1990s. A kayak instructor reported a green kayak capsizing and then sinking. After he approached in his boat, there were no traces of the kayak and no one reported flipping their kayak. Okay, so I'm I'm sorry. I'm beating these things to death. So if you get to the other kayak, it capsizes and sinks. Of course you're not going to, unless it's the water clarity is 80% minimum. But his point was that nobody lost a kayak. Right. He saw something that was the size and shape of a kayak go under the water, okay. uh, he went to be of assistance, but then found out in the process that nobody lost a kayak, so there was just some kayak-sized item. Why do you I feel like creature. you're getting the impression that I don't believe what we're, we're talking about? Because you've said manatee about 600 times. Okay. I'm trying to be logical here. All right. Uh, okay, this far in. Yes. Where are you at? Be honest. I'll give my opinion. 
Oh, come on. Give we're me a not shred. There. We're not there yet. Okay, fine. So Okay, so in 2004, a Tahoe Queen bartender captured the head of Tessie on film. This film has been held back from the public. Okay. It's not been released yet. Not been released yet. Why? No idea. It doesn't make sense. I, I don't understand it. I think that it's... The world's not ready for it yet, as well. In 2004. So a bartender and Jack Cousteau, or Jacques Cousteau, are of the same belief. Uh, in 2004, yes. we've got digital photography at this point. Yes. High-definition digital photography. Yes. We have phones that can take pictures. Phones that can text. Phones that can text. That doesn't matter. And we've got a bartender that won't give it, won't give up the film. There's no excuse. There's not. I don't know why we don't have like a litany of photos and videos and let's see Tessie. Okay, so I'm ready. We can we can talk about your skeptical point of view all you want, but just look at the fact that. Up until 10 years ago, every scientist on the planet swore that the coelacanth was extinct, and they caught one. Okay. Could we not have a similar situation here? We could, but they're so elusive. I mean, I understand the only the strong survive, but we're talking of, we're getting into areas of, like, prehistoric proportions okay so one of the theor- one of the theories that i didn't cover in the notes at all okay was that the city of tahoe wanted to drum up publicity for their town and they hired a company that genetically engineered a dinosaur and brought it back just specifically for that lake It sounds a lot like the plot to Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Okay, we. I I wonder what a nine year old would say to that. Um, I wouldn't have any idea. I haven't seen a nine year old all day. Do you believe? Uh, okay. All right. Go ahead. What is your opinion? Do you think that they genetically created, engineered Tessie? Tessie. If they genetically engineered Tessie. Then we should have the Indominus Rex right now. We need this thing in our lives. It has to be a thing. You've heard it here. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Connor, for your insights and okay. your wisdom. Okay, so some of the skeptics out there have said that this could be a sturgeon, uh, freshwater eel. There's one in our studio that says it could be a manatee. There's a dinosaur in the studio that says it could be a manatee. <laughs> um, one of the things that I saw, alligator gars are native to the area. I refuse to see to say what I think it is, or what it would not what I say. I'm not. I don't refuse to say manatee, plesiosaur. It's a possibility, but then again, ice age. Didn't it, it survive? It was a volcano at one time. Where did this? Unless this creature evolved into a water. Uh, help me in, into a creature that survives in the water. There's there's an evolutionary thing that's that we fell to the, the correlation and the 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 Arctic shift and the parallel dox of the. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so the alligator gar. I like I like this. Are one you just ignoring option. me? Um, no. You're just being dismissive. I'm just you're, being dismissive. You're just glazing it, glazing it over. But the alligator gar, I like the alligator gar. I like they, that idea. They have found those things. They get up to 20 foot long. Yes, they do. We that, have them here. Right. And it meets a lot of the criteria. Yeah. You and I have been, we've mentioned it on the show before, we've been on a couple of kayak trips. You swear to God that the fish in that river... Are, are the, massive. They're and, massive. And I understand there's some magnification going on. And these are big fish. 
but, but they're, they were huge. That's Brett's interpretation. You, you know, two or three foot long fish is a two or three long, a two or three foot long fish. But if Brett tells the story, it was 16, 17 foot long. It had teeth. Like, I'm telling you 12 feet long. It was a goldfish, twelve foot long goldfish. <laughs> okay, so what are we, what are we going to need? We go to Lake Tahoe. We want to get some evidence of Tessie. Well, you're going to have to have sonar. Do we have to have sonar? Well, I mean, it's a, you know, you, we don't know how these things communicate. So you're saying let's rent a boat, make rent sure boat. it's got sonar on it. Make sure it has sonar. You want to have probably a fish finder. All right. That can identify structure and... Okay. Are we going to scuba dive in this situation? I'm not. Okay. I'm going to stay in the boat and make sure it stays afloat, and you're going to go scuba dive for this. I, I'm going to say you, you'll you want to bring high-definition camera, high-definition oh, yeah. camcorder, uh, maybe some underwater recording devices, mm -hmm. both sound and visual. Yeah. Anything else come to mind? Um, a clean pair of undies, because if you say it, you're going to crap your britches. I like that. Do you like that idea? Yeah. So, defense against this creature? Doesn't sound like it's all that violent. Stay out of the water. But yeah, I say stay out of the water. Stay out of the water. Because, well, the problem is, like, it's typically the teenagers that are, like, splashing around. And, eh, it's the skinny dippers that get killed. You know, as, as big a tourist destination as Lake Tahoe is, mm -hmm. if um, Tessie was a meat eater, mm -hmm. I think statistically we should see a lot more missing kids on yeah. spring break. Yeah. I, I just uh, – this is one of those – when we're getting – when we talk about cryptids, you know, you and I have talked, and I'm going to be honest – Full, full transparency here. I try to be as open mm -hmm. as, dare I say, optimistic about the evidence. And it's just not, that's the problem is the evidence is just isn't there. Uh, and I, everything is kind of. I understand the issue with that you have with the cryptids as a general rule with the population density of our country the way it is these a lot of these places are tourist destinations everybody's got a camcorder why don't we have anything but blurry photos it's well and the thing is too is like as we we move literally move farther into the woods and things get flushed out into the you know we get raccoons and we get possums and we get coyotes and deer, you know. Why aren't these creatures following the food? It, it should. We should see a Sasquatch digging in the trash can. I mean, that's that's just where I'm at with it. And and the thing about Tessie is, it's all at this point. It's some blurry photos. It's always a picture that was taken. You know, how do you take a picture of something that's going 60 miles an hour? Well, there's a lot of photos that out there, and it's just not concrete enough for me. I want to, I want to say that it, it's, it's the chances are likely that it's an alligator gar. I'm going with manatee. You uh, basket case. <laughs> so anyway, so the the town of Tahoe. Yes. Um, their slogan: Lake Tahoe is America's all year playground. That is something that if you're going to see Tessie, you are going to run into avoid spring break because you're going to see a whole lot of teenagers, and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, population of the town, 21,000. Yeah. Other things to do other than than drinking or, take your clothes off. or Tessie hunting. Yeah. Uh, camping, hiking, backpacking, biking, boating. Biking? Biking. You went, did you hear what you said there? I did. Say it again. Biking. 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 Um, also, apparently it's a uh, pretty big honeymoon destination. It is. 
Um, that's that's my understanding. I don't know if I'm going boating in this place, though. I don't think so either. Whether it's a tessie or it's an alligator gar or a manatee, I don't want to be anywhere near the water. Yeah, but you get scared of four four I, inch long this goldfish. Is true. Well, I get scared of four inch deep water. <laughs> that as well. Um, so, I I could have died, and you know. It. <laughs> so we talked about it earlier, a little bit yeah. about ideas for businesses in the sure. area. Brett and I went and looked. We we didn't find any Tessie themed restaurants, right? Which, so we both came up with um, our own idea for a Tessie themed restaurant. If anybody wants to to go into business, jump I think, on board. I think Tessie's Taco Cave would be a good business uh, slogan for this company. Could be dive into some tacos. Feel free to use it. I I um I don't claim any any right of ownership on that. Mm-hmm. So and Brett, did you have one as well? Yeah, I did. Tessie's Delicatessen. Uh, I don't really have a slogan for it. That's hor- horrible. Well, I mean, what would what do you how do you sloganize? Is that a word? Um, it should be. It should be. It is now. Uh, t- Tessie's Delicatessen. I don't know. Meat from down deep. I like it. We could do that. <laughs> we could do that. Uh, Tessie's Tuna Shop. That just doesn't sound... Where we make all of your favorite tunas. All right. It's it's not... It's freshwater, though. Tessie's... Tuna's huh? not freshwater fish. Uh, Tessie's Cantina. Okay. I like that one. Okay, so, but if you do go, you you obviously can't go to Tessie's Taco Cave, um, but you can go and get some five-star Italian food from a place that you and I approve of. Uh, it's called Fasta Pasta. Oh, really? Yes, Fasta yeah. Pasta is a one-man show, hole in the wall, inside of a liquor store. Is that right? Yes. That's the, cool. If you're going... Be prepared to wait because there's literally one guy running this. Um, I've got a um, Yelp review from Claudia C. She said it's excellent Italian food for a great price. It's located inside of a liquor store. You might just miss it if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, But if you venture upon it, uh, you'll be in for a pleasant surprise. The options are limited, and there's only one guy taking orders. uh, But he clearly knows what he's doing and makes some awesome pasta dishes. Right. On, I, I can get down with some pasta, you know, because I'm getting ready for a, a marathon. Yeah, you got to carve gotta up, carve up for your marathon. The, the marathon's next year, so I'm going to start doing it now. Yeah, I mean, if you stick to a really <laughs> hard, high carb diet for the next 365 days, you should have all the carbs you need to run a marathon. I should be able to run to the couch. No, <laughs> I don't think you can run to the so, couch after. Ultimately, ultimately. Or, or, or were we done with the review? Yeah, and I I, th- I think that's pretty much Lake Tahoe and Tessie in a, a, in a seashell. A seashell. So, old, what do you got there? I'm I'm sorry. What do you have here? Um, it's just my notes. <laughs> oh, <your> notes. Sorry. <laughs> so ultimately, give me your definitive opinion. If you had to say, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what is it? What's Tessie? Um, That's a great story. I mean, if anything, it's a great legend. Absolutely. I'm. I don't have an opinion. I haven't been out and tried to find it. Um, I didn't talk to Jacques Cousteau after he dropped his mini sub in the lake. So no real opinion. I'd still like to go. I I would encourage other people to go check it out. Worst case scenario, you you check it off. You spend a day or two at a beautiful lake. Well, and you got people on a party barge going going by you going, you bunch of freaking nerds, man. Like I said, don't go beer, on beer. spring break. <laughs> yeah, don't getting beer cans thrown at you when you're trying to look for Tessie. So, okay, cool. That's that. That is that. So, um, 
we need your suggestions. We do need we suggestions. We need your feedback. Feedback. So like us on Facebook, Travel Please. Oddities Podcast. There's no if you're listening to this, that means that you have access to technology. Correct. I mean, how do you have iTunes and not have everybody has a Facebook page? Right. No uh, reason not to. Absolutely not. Um Twitter. Follow Twitter. us on Twitter. What is our Travel Oddities. Travel Oddities at Twitter. On, on Twitter. Or at Travel Oddities. At Travel Oddities. We're everywhere. Um, five-star reviews. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. And we will. You give us. I'll tell you what. You give us a five-star review, and we'll mention you on the air. Give us a five-star review, and Brett will take you to a five-star restaurant. Yes. Called, what's it called? Fousies? Fasta Pasta? I thought it was Fasta. I'll take you to Fasta Pasta. Lies. Lies. Oh, nothing but lies. But anyway, this has been Travel Oddities. I'm Brett Manzer. And I'm Harley Covington. And this is... The special guest, Connor Covington, the best person in the world. Okay. Well, the <laughs> editing. Peace. Peace.